Hello, sunshine. This is Joy from Michigan in the U.S. And first off, I have to say a huge thank you to all of you who got me to my birthday goal before my birthday month was even here. I hit 100 subscribers the other day and I am so, so excited. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get a video made. It has been a busy several days. But I wanted to get on here and just do a fun one just as a thank you to all of you. I will have more videos coming hopefully this weekend. So today we're going to do a painted ornament. I got these ornaments from Hobby Lobby. They're fantastic. They're shatterproof, um, which makes it easy if you want to do this with little ones or older ones who are not super careful. Either way, um, they finished well. The paint has held real well and they're easy to varnish. So I'm just going to go through the things that you need to do this project. The first thing is you're going to want a foam block. I got these at the dollar store for $3.50. You can also find them at craft stores. Then you're gonna need some skewers and you're just gonna take these skewers and you want something with a pointed end, I think that would be easiest. You could also use popsicle sticks. You just might have to use a little more force. And you're gonna take those skewers and you're just gonna push them into your foam block so that you have something to hang your ornaments on. Now you may be able, I don't know if you can tell or not, but these are not exactly straight. That's okay, because you can balance your ornament on there just fine. The next thing you're gonna need is paints. I have picked out several. I have dragonfly grillies, which I love. It's a little bit thick, so I'm not sure what that'll do. But then I have three colors that I've picked, a deep green, my favorite goldenrod yellow, and crimson. And these are my pre-mixed paints. I mix these with Floetrol. No water, just Floetrol. You don't want your paints to be water thin. You want them to be thick. They don't have to be super thick, but about the consistency that you would get, not from the extreme sheen, but just from a craft paint should be fine. But if you're buying a heavier body paint, add some Floetrol or some Elmer's glue all. Don't, don't use Elmer's school glue, it does not work. All right, so aside from the paint, you're also gonna need a cup to put the paint in and an ornament. So this is an iridescent ornament, which is all they had left at my Hobby Lobby when I was there. Hopefully it works just as well as the, the regular. So you're just going to pull the top off. Set that aside. Don't lose that. You'll want that. And then I just try to balance it so that it looks somewhat level down here. And then you're just going to start filling your cup. And I'm sorry because I did not open my paints. Sometimes they're kind of ornery and they don't want to open right so I hope you all are doing well. I hope you've had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We had a quiet Thanksgiving at home with our little family. It was very nice, very different from our typical, but it was a very nice Thanksgiving. All right, let's get going. So remember the first color that you put in your cup will be the last color that comes out on the ornament, which may make it the most dominant. So keep that in mind when you do your colors. I'm gonna start with crimson. And you don't have to put a ton in, but you do want a good amount of paint because it takes more than you think you're going to lose a lot of paint when you pour it on the ornament, which is okay as long as you're aware of that. Let's throw some dragonfly glaze in. Maybe I should have held this one upside down. It is a little bit on the thick side. So see how thick that is coming out of there? You really want it a little bit thinner than that. So probably won't use too much of that. You want your paints to all be the same consistency. If you have one that's even more thin, than the rest, then it will all blend together and it will not be pretty. So keep that in mind. Thin paint equals blended paint, which if that's the look you're going for, that's fantastic. Oh goodness, do you see what just happened? This one's not shaken up enough. I'll shake it up a little more. So if you have a thin paint in here, what it tends to happen is all the paints mix together and you end up with one color on your ornament. Now you might think too, why not just Look, it's got an opening. Let's just pour the paint in there and we can roll it around. I've tried that. I don't recommend it. The colors blend even more when you do it on the inside and it takes forever to dry. So keep that in mind. Here we go. This is rose, rose gold. And red and green tend to make mud, but I'm going to go for it, guys. I really, really like the idea of red and green. So what I'm trying to do is keep in mind what colors mix, what they'll look like when they mix together. Um, you don't want opposite colors on the color wheel next to each other. They tend to make mud. So I'm trying to put one of my metallics in between all my colors because I don't have colors that I want to blend. This is just pearl white. That one might be a little on the thick side too. We'll see. 
and then yellow. So I'm looking for kind of a retro look here. Um, just something kind of fun. And you can see I'm just putting paint in however it floats my boat. I'm not really worried about how much of one color and how much of the next. I'm just enjoying the process. I'm going to throw in some more of this dragonfly glaze and hope that it doesn't mess things up. And then we'll do the green. I think I'm just going to do the one line of yellow too. And then we'll do some pearl and then that'll be it. Ooh, I'm going to run out of this stuff. Okay. Now comes the fun part. I usually pour from the same side that I kind of dribbled down the side of. And I should have told you guys I was pouring down this side because if you pour straight into the middle, it has more of a tendency to mix. So if you pour it down the side, the colors tend to stay separated a little bit better. So here we go. I'm just gonna pour out of that same side. You might want gloves for this part because if you touch your ornament, you're gonna have paint all over your hands. If you're like me, that doesn't bother you. Now you can just do however you wanna lay it down. I kind of tend to do ringish pours, but I also like to every once in a while just add like a ribbon like that and just see what we get. Getting a little bit of blue in there. So you're just going to keep pouring the paint and I like to do little circles to give you thinner lines. And I don't care if part of it goes one way and part of it goes another and we've got all these different angles and I'm almost out of paint the hard part is did it cover it all so don't get too attached when you see what it looks like right away it is going to drip down look how pretty that is oh my goodness I'm just walking around my ornament and checking to make sure there's paint coverage on every side don't worry about how it's dripping, let it be. And then you'll notice underneath the ornament, I've got this lovely puddle of paint. So you can take a glass cabochon, which is a little glass, like half a marble almost, and you dip it in that, and then you can turn that into a necklace or a keychain. That's a lot of fun. If you don't have those on hand, the reason I didn't unwrap these foam blocks is that you can let the paint dry right here on top of this foam block, and then you can peel it off and use it to make necklaces or keychains. So. I'm going to leave this to drip. It will take probably a couple hours before it's completely done dripping. So my lines are going to spread. My lines are going to stretch. We're not going to have super defined lines like we do right now, but it will turn out still very pretty. So this is, this is one that I did that same kind of pour and you still have the lines. Now some of them have dripped a little more than others, but I still think that's very pretty. So last step, once you've let this dry for two or three days, wait it's hard to wait because you want to get it done and get it hung on your tree but give it a little time make sure it dries really really well um keep it in a warm room right now i'm in my art room so i have my heater on if you don't have a heated room you might want to move this into a place where you can warm it up once your ornament has dried for several days this one has already been varnished but i wanted to show you guys so it's going to get extra coating so you're still going to keep the top piece off if you get a big bowl like this and you put in, this is a Liquitex high gloss varnish, which is my favorite varnish to use right now. But you can probably get away with just about any varnish, any kind of finishing product, or you can spray paint these, but I've not done that, so I don't know how it works. But this is the easiest process I've ever found. So you're just gonna stick it in the bowl, push it down. You see how it, I don't know if you can you guys see the top is not covered. See how there's like that little bit. So you just kind of lean it, super easy. This is great for kids. This is great. I love this. I could do this all night. Great for, you know, do this with your grandparents. How much fun would that be? And then you're just going to let it drip. It will drip for quite a while because it's a very thin varnish, the, the Liquitex is. So I just wait until it's dripping because I don't want to waste that if I don't have to. So I'm just going to let that drip. And if you find some place that has these, let me know because I can't find any. They're sold out, unfortunately. Just a few more drips and then I'll, I'll hang it on the other skewer. So with these foam blocks I have, I can do three ornaments at a time. I've got four of them, so I can do 12. So I need to get me some ornaments so I can keep doing this. 
So then you're just gonna do the same thing. You're gonna flip it upside down. This way, and my husband came up with this genius idea. Um, I was hanging it the other way with the little metal piece on. Oh, it's still very crooked. All right, I'll fix it later. So I originally I kept this piece on and I hung the ornament by that and let it drip. But you end up with a really ugly spot on the bottom of the ornament. So this way your ugly spots will end up right here where it's dripping and then you can just take those off. They're really, really easy to remove. So no worries, I just pull it off with my fingers. So there we go. And then I wanted to show you guys this one little thing. Look at this cute little hook. So these are my ornament hooks that I'm using. I got these at Hobby Lobby for a buck and I don't even remember how many are in the package, maybe 20. But a little fun, fun way to add something extra to your hand painted ornament. So let me know what you guys think. I will try to get some more videos uploaded this weekend. I hope y'all are doing well, staying safe. Look at that, it's so much fun. Not quite what I expected color wise, but I really, really, really love it. Just love it. So let me know what you guys think and I will see you on the next one.